everyone. So I've had some people um, ask me about Scratch, how to use it and stuff like that when they're doing their uh, programming, computer programming, stuff like that. So I just kind of want to go over a quick kind of like a tutorial overview of how to use Scratch. Um, what are some of the things that it can do real quick and real basic? Um, I don't want this to be a really long video or anything like that. Um, that just kind of goes over and touches how to actually create a project in Scratch. Um, so when you're kind of just starting off with uh, computer programming, I know it's kind of hard already just to kind of wrap your head around computer language, the different languages that are out there, and um, how to uh, use certain uh, use certain programs and stuff like that. At the same time, we're trying to learning uh, what our uh, loops, um, variables, booleans, and all that stuff. So um, just want to make a quick tutorial, just kind of give everybody an overview, just make it a little bit easier for you when you're, you know, creating your project and stuff like that, uh, using Scratch. So here is the website. Uh, if you go to scratch.mit.edu, uh, you can find it there. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you Google it, Scratch MIT, uh, you can find it there also. Um, nice thing about it is that you don't have to, uh, join Scratch, sign in or anything like that. Uh, you can literally just go over here to create and create a new project up here at the top. And once you click on that, it'll start your brand new project. Um, so here is the, uh, the UI, the user interface that you'll see when you first open up a scratch project. Um, we'll kind of just go ahead and close this out since we're going over tutorial now. And the center part is your main coding area. This is where, uh, all of your, um, I guess, computer language will go to be your drag and drop computer uh, language and stuff like that. Um, over here are your, I guess, drag and drop icons. I'm not really sure what all these things are called, so please bear with me on that. Um, but I guess you can kind of you can kind of follow along with me. Um, so you have the motion area where we can set uh, different motions for your sprite, which is your sprite over here on the far right. Um, you have the looks area where you can change um, the different looks of your sprite. Sound where you can add different sounds to your sprite or your overall project. Events where you can, um, there's basically an ac action where you can um, have the sprite or something else go on within your project. Uh, control actually controls certain things that the um, sprite can do. Sensing is basically when you have um, uh, two objects like touching each other or they, they can kind of uh, sense where the other one is or, or something like that. Um, operators, kind of more mathematical uh, operations that go on. Um, this plus that, this minus that, this equal to that. And they don't have to exactly be numbers. It could be something like um, um, is apple equal to a banana? No, then say no or something like that. Uh, variables, variables are pretty much the root word of a variable is very, so they can change from here to there. It's something that you set um, and can go up or down. And my blocks area, this will be your chance to make your own blocks um, of code. So if you wanted a item, <clears throat> uh, item to, let's say you wanted it to move left, move right, move up, move down. Uh, instead of actually putting that in your main code, you can create a block that tells it to move left, move right, move up, move down, and then just put your block inside of your main code. Uh, and like I said, we'll go over all of this. We'll go over all of this um, again as we're creating a quick project, uh, but I just kind of wanted to give you a rundown of what's all here on the left side. Uh, if you switch over here to the costumes tab, you'll see your sprite. And from here, you can edit your sprite. So on here, you see over here on the far left, uh, you'll see your different costumes already. And basically what they did for this was that they took the sprite, they duplicated it, and then they changed the way that the uh, the legs uh, are in position, and I guess the arms are positioned also. So if I kind of switch back and forth between these two, you'll see kind of like the difference between them. And the way to do that um, is like you can just click on it, and literally you can just rotate this around if you wanted to. You can move it. Uh, I'm going to hit undo for that. Um, the leg or body can do that also. Right now, 
all of these are grouped together. So if I move this and move all as one, I can hit undo. And then I can actually hit the ungroup button. And once I hit the ungroup button, it now comes up as separate objects. So now um, I'm moving it, but as you can see, that white piece in the center is still uh, still there. Uh, so I can move that white piece out if I wanted to. Um, let's try a different one. I think the head probably be better to show you. If I hit ungroup on the head, I'll be able to move the eyes separately. I'll be able to move them. Uh, mouthpiece stuff like that separately uh, if I wanted to so I just go ahead and hit undo on all that okay um, and again you can hit right click and go to duplicate you can delete your um, costume for your sprite or you can export it out if you wanted to um, you can change the color uh, right now uh, I think the color is set for this one I'm not not sure um, and you can change the name of it if you wanted to as well. And I think that's about it on this one. So jumping over here to the sounds tab. So we have our different sounds. Um, here's one sound here. It's just a cat meowing. I hope you all could hear that. Um, just really is a cat meowing sound. And um, we can actually add different sounds on here. Nice thing about this program is that you can add your own custom sounds as well. So here at the bottom left, you have a little blue button here. And once you hover over that, you only have to click on it. Just hover over it, and you can go here to choose a sound, which you can search for already preloaded sounds within, uh, within the Scratch program. Or you could record a sound. So literally, I could sit here and record my voice um, if I wanted to, and then uh, bring, export it or import it into the program and use it in my project. Um, surprise and upload sound I haven't really used myself um, just because I, I usually use the record uh, sound button or just the already preloaded sounds uh, but those are available to you as well if you need them um, and again you can just go ahead and change uh, the name of the sound um, I believe you can crop it trim it down to make it smaller or shorter you can do a fade in fade out kind of thing um, so you can edit it as you as you see fit uh, so there's a lot of functionality with uh, the Scratch program um, just in that itself, and it's actually um, it's actually pretty nice. So over here is your sprite area. So anytime that you add in a new sprite to your scene, your project, uh, it'll come up here, and you'll see more and more sprites as we kind of go on with the uh, with the tutorial. Um, but again, you can change the name of the sprite. Um, over here is the X Y position. So if you think of your uh, X Y coordinate plane. Right now, this sprite, the cat, is centered at the origin, which is zero zero. That's why it's zero in the X direction, X going from left to right, and zero in the Y direction, which is up and down. So if I move him to the right, place him there, you can see that I went to the negative five in the Y, which means I went down a little bit, like five. Um, I'm not sure what the uh, units is for that, five inches, five centimeters, whatever. Um, but then he also went 159, we'll call them steps. He went 159 steps from his zero position over to the right. If I move him back to the left, you now see that he is now 152 in the negative x direction, and he's back at zero for the y. If I move him up, he is 2 in the X, which means he's no farther in X or Y from his starting zero position. Um, and in the Y direction, he is up 122. And if I come down, negative 125 and 5 in the X. Uh, and I believe, if, not, if I'm not mistaken, that the center point of his I guess, body is like the actual center point um, that we click on. So, if, like, say, for example, you wanted him to... Um, say at the, at the bottom edge of the screen, uh, I think the whole entire area here is 180 uh, both ways, so 180 in the positive y direction and also a negative 180 in the y direction. So if I bring him down, now he's at negative 155, negative 164, negative 180 there. Let me see if I can go any farther than that. Up oh, negative 190. 
so negative 206. So I've actually never actually tested that out. Um, so I guess the actual point for him, it might be his, his whole body. I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, but we'll kind of play with around with that later. Um, so you can also hide. So if you say if you wanted to sh uh, hide him in the scene, you can do that like that. If you want to show him in the scene, you can do that like that also. And then um, you can change his size if you wanted to. Right now it's at 100. Let's make it 50. He'll become smaller. And then back to 100. Uh, direction. You can change the way that he's um, he's, he's looking. So we can bring it down. Bring him around. Up to the top. Stuff like that. Um, so let's go ahead and change that back to 90. All right, and if you wanted to add in a new sprite, you come down here, bottom right, under in the uh, sprite area. Go to choose sprite, and you can click on choose sprite. Uh, you can click on to paint a sprite, uh, surprise, and upload again. It's something that you could do. Um, and I believe when you upload a sprite, it's like you uh, you came over here to costumes, and where is it? Uh, and we did an export of the sprite. We can export it out, probably bring it in Photoshop, edit it however we want to. And then from there, we can um, import it back in, upload it into the Scratch program, and then actually uh, use it in our scene again. So like I said, there's a lot of functionality with Scratch that you can use. Um, and that's just kind of, you know, one of them. But it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty nice and pretty simple. Um, but if I go over here to, uh, well, actually, I'm going to jump over here to the background uh, to set the stage. So here is the stage area. Uh, this is the back of your actual scene. You can change that. Again, you can search for already preloaded backgrounds that are in the program. Or you can um, import, upload uh, different backgrounds as well that you have. So let's say you have, I don't know, a, a picture of your own house or something like that on your porch. Um, you want to bring that into the program and animate something around it on your actual porch. Uh, you can do that. You can pretty much um, bring in any um, any sprite, any um, background that you want to, and uh, bring it into the program. All right. So now I guess we can kind of get started with the actual um, code. So uh, what I'm going to do for this tutorial, I'm actually going to create a project. And this project is just going to be a, um, I was kind of thinking about it earlier, it's going to be a, uh, a lady or a man, whichever I can get, um, that's holding a couple of balloons, um, flying up to the sky. Um, your task is kind of like a game. Your task will be to pop all the balloons before, let's say that she, um, she or he hits the ceiling uh, or reaches the sky or whatever. I guess we would try to find a background that has a sky in it. Um, uh, and then before he hits the sky, be able to hit all the balloons and bring the lady or man back down to the ground. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with that. <clears throat> all right. So what we're going to do here, we'll go ahead first and let's set the scene. So we want to just choose a background. Um, and here are all the backgrounds that they have. You can go here to search. Um, I haven't played around to see how many that they actually have. Um, they have quite a bunch of them, but let's see if we can actually find. Um, so this blue sky here might be nice. It has a ground, some bushes in the back, nice blue sky. Um, this one is slopes, winter. I guess you won't really be blowing up balloons in the winter. Uh, here's one with the pool. It actually looks like this is more of a um, actual actual photo rather than just like an animated um, animated image or something like that. Uh, here's one hayfield. Um, let's try this blue sky one. That's good there. Um, and so this sprite. So we don't want to use a cat. Uh, we can have the cat there if we wanted to, but I'm just going to go ahead and delete the cat out. And then let's go ahead and choose a new sprite. So someone that looks like they could be holding a balloon. Um, maybe Andy. 
Um, hmm. Yeah, so they have a whole bunch of actual sprites in here. Um, and when I say sprites, I really just mean characters. I'm not sure exactly why they are called sprites, um, but they're pretty much as any um, any character that can be in your scene. Um, and again, character does not have to be a actual person. Uh, here we have a rooster. Here we have rocks. Um, here we have rocket ship. Um, there's a shark in here. Uh, stop sign, letters, stuff like that. So all of these are considered to be sprites. Um, and just to kind of keep moving with the tutorial, I think I'm just going to go with Andy. And you can kind of see him switching around here in different positions. So all of those are just different costumes. Um, if you think about it, just a, a picture. If you um, <clears throat> take a whole bunch of pictures all at once, and um, you take a whole bunch of pictures all at once, and then speed them up real fast to go over with each other, it kind of looks like a movie. Uh, so the easiest thing to do if you want your sprite to be animated is just to change the costume and set it to change between costumes really, really fast. Um, so just kind of like a little tip or hint for you guys with that. Um, all right, so let's see. So first thing we're going to do is change his costume to something that's a little bit more. I like this one. I like this one. Looks like he's kind of reaching up for some balloons or kind of going up in the sky. Um, and then we can probably change it to this one when he's falling back down. Yeah, let's let's try that. So first off, we're going to start with this costume here come back over here to code and let's go ahead and bring him down to where we want him to so I'm just going to kind of center him up here on the ground um, let's say about right there and we kind of get the location here so in the two uh, in the x direction it's two and in the y direction is negative one zero five and we'll go ahead with the coding part now. So the first thing that we're going to want to do, <clears throat> oh, and I forgot to talk about up here, um, how to actually use this um, uh, scene area. So you can drag and drop as you see me have done before. Uh, up here at the top, there is a green button that says go and a red button that says stop. So when you want to play your animation, you hit the green go button and you go ahead and uh, play the whole scene throughout and then you hit the red stop button when you want to stop um, you can also hit this button here at the far right that says full screen control to make it go full screen and you can actually see your um, animation larger um, so from there <clears throat> we'll go ahead and first thing is start the scene so here under events you have your uh, basically your scene start um, button. So when the green flag is clicked, what do we want him to do? Well, the first thing that we want him to do is go to this exact location. Uh, so we're going to go to motion and under motion we're going to say go to location. We can actually set this also. Motion being zero uh, or x direction being zero and let's say Let's say 105 is good in the Y. I uh, don't want him to go any lower or higher than that where he's at now. But I just chose zero for the X just to kind of center him up a little bit. So now if we, let's say we move him up here and we hit the green flag, he'll go to that exact location. Anytime we hit the green flag, no matter where he's at, he'll go back to that exact location. And that's just to start off our scene. Um, and we have to set this for every sprite that we have in the, uh, in the actual uh, project. So when the green flag is clicked, I want him to go to this location. And um, let's say what I want him to do is to blow up some balloons. So let's go ahead and grab balloons, see if they have balloons under sprite. And I actually see it right here. Um, Looks like a multicolored balloon just because it's switching so fast, but really those are just different costumes. So I'm going to click on balloon. 
that's a nice size balloon. And uh, it might actually be a little bit too big, but we'll see. Um, so now, as you can see over here in my main coding area, it's empty. That's because now we are on our um, uh, balloon sprite. If we jump back over here to Andy, you'll see our code for Andy is still set. So each sprite that we have, we have a different code set for, but you can also talk between each sprite so that they can um, interact with each other. And that's what we're going to do when we have our balloon. We're going to say when our balloon rises up, we want Andy to rise up with him. And when our balloon goes away, we want Andy to fall down. So, um, so with our balloon, we're actually going to say, hey, when the green is checked, we want it to go to this location. And this location is negative 11, negative 7. So come back up here to our motions and we'll say go to negative 11, negative 7. And actually, so one thing I'm thinking, I think I want to go ahead and instead of having him uh, just have the balloons already, I think I want him to be blowing up the balloons. And then uh, once I get big enough, then he starts to fly up in the sky. So actually let's just say we want the look for it and we want to change the size here so when it goes to when a green check mark is checked we want to change the size oh no i'm sorry so this is change size by so we want to, want to change it by and when you're when you mess up you can always move these different code blocks around um the one thing i don't like about the program say if i had um Let's just, I'll just throw some random stuff in here now. Uh, say if I had all four of these together and I just want to move this change by size, I just want to move that out. Well, I can't just move it out and then everything snaps back up. I have to move this out and then everything below it moves and I have to move everything below it also. Um, I can, however, take this block and snap it into anywhere. It'll fit in there, it'll fit in there, it'll fit anywhere I want to go. But if I want, if I want to remove a block um, from the middle of a, of a code. If you think about a whole bunch of code going down the whole page, uh, it's kind of difficult to have to just move one out, just to have to move everything out and then move it back in. Um, but let's go ahead and drop these back in. Oh yeah, and then to get rid of blocks, um, all you have to do is just click on it, drag it over here to the left and let it go and it automatically disappears. Uh, where does it go? I have no clue, but it's gone. Um, so what I want to do is to set the size. So as soon as the green check mark is checked, I want to set the size of the balloon to zero, zero percent. This will this will make the um, uh, this will make the balloon basically disappear, and then we're going to have our friend Andy here actually blow up the balloon until it's big enough to um, carry him into the sky. Um, but we still wanted to go to this location here when it does that. Um, and then afterwards, we want him to blow up the balloon. So um, we're going to say, we're going to say change size by 10. And one thing with the program is that every time you set a new, um, pro, um, what's it called, a new block down, you have to keep in mind that the program is reading the program basically all at once. So when it says to set the size, go to certain location, change size by 10, even though I'm reading that one by one, the program pretty much speeds through it and it does everything so fast that you really can't see it. So one thing that you have to do is come over here to control and set a weight on it. So this tells the program to, hey, wait a second, don't go through the code that fast, give it a minute to process um, and then go ahead to the next step. So if I click here and uh, drag it into this spot, it'll, let's just say, um, actually, uh, let me show you this real quick. So now the code is out of it. Once the code is not in line with the rest of the code, it won't actually read this other code. It's just basically out here. Um, the blocks have to be connected in order for the, the pro read it. So right now, if I hit the green check mark, 
as you can see, it snapped. Um, it snapped directly to this size here. Uh, if I hit stop sign, hit the green check mark again, you didn't see that the size went to zero. Reason why? Because it, again, the program is happening so fast that it set it to zero, set it to that location, and set it to ten all at once. Uh, if I hit the green check mark again, it's, you can't really see any changes. But now, if I uh, put in here a wait command, and let's just say we're going to have it wait two seconds before changing the size, I hit the green check. Now it's pretty much zero, and then it grows to that different size. So keep in mind to always use your uh, wait commands. Um, they will come in handy quite a bit just to kind of let the program know. Because sometimes I go through the program and I'm saying, why is this not working? Why is that not working? Well, in fact, it is working. It's just getting overridden so fast by another um, by another command that I didn't get the chance to see it. So I had to throw in a wait command, um, wait for a second, maybe two seconds, just so I can see what happened, and then it'll let it go to the next um, uh, the next spot. Uh, so from there, I want to go ahead and actually duplicate this. And you can duplicate items in the code, and it'll grab every item underneath it. Uh, which is another thing I don't really like too much because, say, for example, I just want to duplicate this set size to and go to command. It'll actually duplicate everything underneath that. So if I hit duplicate, as you can see now, I have four items instead of two. So I can just drop it down, grab these two items, and bring them out and release them. Um, but that, that's, I think that's the only way to do that. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and add this on there. Add that on there. I'm just going to go ahead and drop this over here to delete it. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want the balloon to um, grow in size every two seconds, basically. So now if I, oh, and another way to test your code. So when I hit the green flag, I am actually hitting the green flag to play every single command that every sprite has. But if you just want to test the command for just this one um, sprite, you can actually just click on your length of code and test that bar bit of code out by itself. Uh, likewise, I believe if I bring this out and I just click on this bit of code, you can see that it highlights yellow. And the only thing now that it's doing is testing out that one bit of code. So for example, if I move this here, move the balloon up, you won't see that it's setting the size to zero and you won't see it go to a certain location when I click on this because I'm only clicking on this bit of code you can see it just, just keeps growing. I'm only clicking on this bit of code um, for it to play. I'm not on all the code for it to play. So if I click on it again, it doesn't change size. It just grows from its current location. And again, you saw it highlight in yellow. But now if I come over here, I bring my code back to the main code. And now I click on this part. Now you can see it go to the location I want to go to. It went to zero, and then it starts to grow. So that's a way to test out your code without having to test out the entire uh, the entire project all at once. Uh, because sometimes when you have a whole bunch of sprites in there, and you have a whole bunch of things going on, and all you want to do is just check if one thing is working. There's no point in going back through the whole program again just to test if that one thing is working. You can just do it from here. Um, OK, so let me see. I think that might be a good size. Um, well, actually, what I'm going to do is change this because I want it to go up a little bit faster. Because I'm just thinking, I want, I may want more than one balloon. Um, I probably want more than one balloon to increase in size. Um, and I'm going to duplicate from here and bring this down here like that. So now you see it's growing a little bit faster, and it grows up to about that size. And I think that's a good size that I wanted at. Um, and I think the location is fine. And then, like I said, what I'm going to do is just actually go ahead and increase um, increase the number of balloons rather than having one balloon really big. I just put like three or four balloons or something like that. All right. So now what we have here is what we call redundant code. It's basically just the same code going over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, um, which we don't really like and we, we don't really need. Um, because it just makes it, it doesn't make the code messy. It just makes it um, really long and, and tedious to have to go through. So what we can do is actually come over here 
and throw in something we call a repeat command. And we can just have our code get repeated multiple times. Um, so let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five. So let's just say we want to change our repeat command to say five. And all we're going to do is we really only just need one of these. Throw that in there and throw this in line with the main code. And there we go. So now this right here, this shortened bit of code, does the same effect as it, uh, as it did when we had a whole bunch of code all at once. Uh, reason being is because we, had, we have our repeat command now. Uh, what it's saying is that, OK, we're going down the code. We're going down the code. We want to wait five seconds or wait 0.5 second, half a second, and then change the size by 10. Then you see this arrow down here that says repeat. So basically, go back up to the top, not the top of the main code, but the top of this repeat command. Go back up to the top of the repeat command and, and repeat everything inside of it and do that five times. So now if I click on this code, you'll see over here, you see the size of the balloon grew five times, even though I don't have five separate um, change size by command. I just have my repeat command. So actually, I can just go ahead and get rid of these and drop it down over there. And another thing I can do is come down here to my blocks and we can just create a block. So create a block. We're going to say, um, balloon one grow, uh, balloon row one, let's say that. Um, and I'm just using, <clears throat> uh, I'm just using um, camel text for that instead of having to put in a whole bunch of spaces and stuff. Um, you'll kind of get more familiar with that when you're working with different uh, coding languages, stuff like that, JavaScript, um, CSS, whichever one, Python that you work with, most of them use the, um, uh, the camel text setup that way. Um, so now I just hit OK. And up here, you can see I have a new pink block uh, that I can use. And I have my block over here under my My Block section, Balloon Grow 1. I have this block now. But what I have to do is define it. I have to set it to something. So what I want to set it to is making my balloon grow. So I can just take this, put it under there, and it's going to repeat this command, the same exact command, five times but now with less code. So I grab my balloon grow one, drag her, put it over and under my main code. Now I only have three commands under my main code. Um, really, it's just out of sight, out of mind. I can just bring this down right there. Here's my code. Nobody really cares what balloon grow is. They just understand that, hey, this code makes the balloon grow. You're the one that set it to how to make it grow, but when a person comes to read your code, this is how they see a real nice, real simple, real sleek piece of code. And again, if I click on it, the balloon grows. All right. So I'm actually just going to bring this up because I personally do like to see it. Um, just so if I ever come back and want to make changes to it, it's right there in line with everything. Um, so now, uh, now what I want to do is I actually want to, actually I want to make him since his hand is in that position, I want to make it look like he's blowing up the balloon and then passing it to his other hand. So what I'm going to do is go into the motion. Um, this motion will glide. I believe it's called glide. And yep, glide. And we want it to glide to this location, his hand. But we want it to start from a different location. So instead of saying go to X first, we wanted to start, let's see, where do we want it to be? Uh, in this hand, about right there. So 13, negative 45. So let's change this to 13, negative 45. So now when the program starts, we're going to set the size to zero. It's going to go to his, uh, looks like the right hand here. And then he's going to make the balloon grow. He's going to blow up the balloon. And then we want to go to the other location in his hand and then wait there until all the balloons are done. So now if I click on his code, it's blowing, it's blowing, it's blowing, it's blowing, and then it goes over there. 
All right. So this is um, actually uh, quite a bit, um, bit of a nice uh, piece of code here to actually make your program do something, make it animate a little bit. From there is just really just building on these these same concepts to uh, figure out exactly you know how to make your program or your sprite do what you wanted to do for the entire program. Um, and one thing I did want to mention also is that if you t pay attention to this code area, pay attention to this code area when I click on my code to start, at first it'll highlight yellow. And then when it gets to this balloon grow, you'll see it snap over here to my balloon grow. Then this will highlight yellow. And then it'll snap back over here again to um, uh, to my main code and highlight that one in yellow. So click. Well, actually, it goes. That's how fast it goes. So as soon as I click, it didn't actually um, highlight this one in yellow because it went so fast. If I throw in a wait, let's just say I want to wait two seconds here. You'll see it better that way. So click, highlighting yellow. Then it snaps over here to balloon grow. Then it snaps back over here to glide. All right. Um, all right. So now from there, what we can really do is just copy and paste this. Um, well, so what I found out, <clears throat> you can't exactly copy and paste code within the program. But what you can do is just come over here to your sprite, right click on it and click on duplicate. Um, so what we're going to do first is just make sure that we have all of our uh, code set up first, just so that when we duplicate it, it takes every single bit of code. Because I found that it's a, actually a pain to try and get um, my code over to another sprite. Uh, even with the block that I made down here, um, I tried to like just take this block and then set it to another sprite, and that did not work. So like for example, if I click on Andy, as you can see, this block goes away. There's no block that I've created under Andy's name, um, just because that block is really just set for uh, the balloon one. Um, and I don't know a way to actually get it set over to the other uh, to the other sprites and stuff like that. So uh, easiest thing to do again is just to get your whole code set up. And since the balloons are kind of just a repeat process, I'll do that last. All right. So now. Um, now, one thing we're going to do is we're going to ask the user if they want balloons, because why is Andy blowing up balloons? He's just in a park by himself blowing up balloons. Uh, let's say he's at work. Say he's a person who blows up balloons for kids, and uh, he enjoys doing that. So let's say, or let's have, let's have Andy say something. Uh, if we go over here to, um, where is it? Okay, so under looks, I'm not sure why it's under looks, but under looks, you can have Andy say stuff, uh, think stuff, switch costumes, which we'll be using later, and change his size, all that stuff. So let's say when the program starts, when the green flag is checked, um, we will have Andy, let's just wait a second. I like to wait about two seconds in the beginning, and then go back to looks, and then... We're going to have him say stuff. Um, if you use this regular say command, it will say it, but you won't be able to see it only because, um, again, the program works so fast. Um, this is usually good to use at the end of a program because when you say it, it'll actually just stay there. So say, for example, I click, I drop this here, I click on it, and now it says hello. And as you can see, the program has stopped because the red, the red checkbox is, uh, or the red stop sign is, um, is not highlighted anymore. And it still says hello because that's the last thing in the program. Um, if I were to come up here and drop it in right after my wait, if I click on it now, it still stays there. Um, but if I throw in another hello command, let's just say we're going to say this world, hello world. You, you probably won't see the hello at all. So let's say if I click on it. Oops. Okay, so now it's cleared out. Sorry about that. It's now cleared out. Nothing's there. So I click on my program. It's going to wait two seconds. 
and all you see is world. That's because, again, it's it, it program ran through all this code so fast that it it you basically just can't see hello. All you saw was world. Um, so it's always good to either throw in your own separate wait command or just use the say hello for blank seconds. So now, again, I can throw this in there. I had to take this one out. It's a little bit irritating, but I didn't have to drop all this back in. Cancel that out. So now if I now if I um, click on the code, again, it'll wait for two seconds, say hello for two seconds, then it'll say world, and then a program ends. All right, so I don't want this, don't want this hello. I want um, Annie to just say hello. Um, and actually, I want Annie to go to his location first. First, before anything, I want him to go to his location, and I want him to wait for two seconds, and I want him to say hello for two seconds. Then I want to ask the user a question. Would you like any balloons? Um, for that one, I'm actually going to use um, this under here, under sensing. We're going to ask a question and wait. When we use and wait, that means we are waiting for a response. That's why it's called. That's why it's under the sensing uh, tab, because we basically are interacting with the user. These are all interactions with other items. Uh, so I want him to ask, "Would you like a, or would you like some balloons?" Question mark. And wait. <clears throat> so now, if I reset my program by hitting the stop button up here. I click on my code, he'll wait two seconds, we'll go to his position, wait two seconds, say hello for two seconds, and ask, would you like some balloons? He's gonna wait for a response. Now right now, if we type something in here, hit enter, we can do that, but <clears throat> that's not what we want the program to do. We want the program to actually do stuff when the person responds, either yes or no. And for that, we're going to use a control. And underneath control, <clears throat> We're going to use an if-then statement. Uh, you'll hear a lot about if-then statements when you go into your, uh, your deep into programming. It'll be if-thens or if-elses. Um, and we're going to use that to basically say, hey, if the, if the user says yes, they want a balloon, we want the, to do this. If the user says no, they don't want a balloon, we want to do that. It's basically two different um, scenarios for um, uh, or two different outcomes for a scenario, sorry. Uh, two different outcomes for one scenario. And what we need in here is a Boolean first. So, and Booleans are basically just like true or false. If this is true, then do this. If this is false, then do that basically. Um, so if, let's say the answer, um, I don't think we'll be able to add this directly in there, no. Uh, so the shape of this is kind of like a diamond, a six-sided hexagon or whatever. Uh, so we need something that will actually fit in there. And for that, the most I found other than these uh, are under these operators down here. And what I'm going to use is this not. This will probably be the easiest one. Can I fit in there? No. Um, what would be the best thing for that? Let's see, let me, ch one second. So I'm trying to figure out what would be the best way to set this up in order to, um, in order for me to be able to put that in there. Uh, actually, I think I can use this one. Uh, I think I could use this one, actually. I'm sorry. Not the not. I want, so if the answer is equal to yes, um, then do something else, then do something else. Um, I also could 
actually use that knot. I could put the knot in there and put that in there also and kind of group it all together. So I could say if the answer is not equal to yes, then do something. But if it is equal to yes, then do something else. Um, and I think I actually like this a little bit better, actually, uh, just because of how I like to set up the code. So I like to put the no condition first, just because it'll end first, and the program will end there. And then um, the yes condition afterwards, so the program can continue on. So if the answer is not equal to no, or if the answer is not equal to yes, then uh, we'll just have him say, Uh, we'll just have him say, okay, have a great day. Okay, have a great day. And then from there, we want to end our code. So we're going to go to events, uh, or is it controls? Uh, controls, actually, and put this stop block in there. So we want to stop, um, stop all, actually, yep. We want to stop all. So now if I click on our program, he's going to say hello. And he's going to say, would you like some balloons? Let's say no. Let's actually, let's say yes. And hit check mark. You see nothing happens because we didn't set the condition for our yes. But if we run our program again, he'll say hello. Um, and let's say no this time. We hit the green uh, check mark. Um, and why didn't that work? I'm actually just going to go ahead and drag this out and click on the separate so I can go directly to this piece of be the code and debug it. So this is where the fun begins. I have to actually kind of figure out what's going on here. So uh, ask. Would you like some balloons and wait? If not, answer equals yes, then say no. Oh, you know what? I think it's because I don't have a wait in there because that should be working. Let's throw a wait in there. Uh, let's throw a wait in there and test that again. So just going to click on that only. Let's say no. Yep. So there we go. So yes, like I said, those weights are very, 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 very important <laughs> because the program happens so fast. Um, as you know, like computers, tablets, mobile phones, all of that, they all work so fast nowadays. It's just it's, it's ridiculous how far it's come. Long way from dial-up. Uh, so now we can go ahead and bring this code back in now that we're done um, basically fixing all the bugs in it. And... <clears throat> I'm actually going to say, let's change this to three seconds, just so you can, the user can actually read it. Or we can actually just make it like five seconds to see round numbers, so like round numbers. Um, so now if I click on this program, hello, would you like some balloons? Uh, if I say no, he'll say, okay, have a great day. And then I walk away and he's fine. Uh, so now that we're done with the no condition, now we can set the yes condition. Uh, and the reason why I set this to um, not yes is because I want the user to be able to say um, anything that they want to. So if they want a balloon, they have to say yes. If they don't want a balloon, they can see to say no, no thank you, maybe later. All of those will be basically not a yes. So those will all end the program. But if they want a balloon, they say yes. And then we will go over here to... Um, so we'll have him say, well, actually let's throw in a wait. We're just going to wait one second. That's fine. And then we'll have him say, okay, great. Okay, great. And then he's going to start blowing up the balloons. <clears throat> so now this is where we add in our connected um, this is where we add in our connected sprite command. So we want a function here that says, hey, the person wants a balloon. How do we get them a balloon now? Well, we come over here to our balloon sprite and blow a balloon up. 
but we need to talk between uh, one another because right now, if I click on the green check, I've been clicking on the main program uh, for Andy himself. So you haven't been seeing anything with the <clears throat> actual balloon happen. But if I click on the green flag, you'll see the balloon start working without any commands back from Andy himself. So if I click the green flag, you'll see the balloon start going. And the person hasn't even asked for any balloons yet. So <clears throat> go ahead, go ahead and end that program and actually go ahead and throw in here what we call a, uh, where is it under, con oh, under events. So underneath events, we are able to set what we call a message that we can broadcast to other sprites. So from here, we want to, Okay, yeah. from here we want to broadcast a message and say new message and say call this blow balloon. Um, camel text. Okay. Now we want to broadcast a message to blow balloons. That, but that is not the only thing we have to do. We, um, now that we broadcast the message to the balloon to say, hey, we need you to enter in our scene now and blow up. Now we want to actually go over to the balloon and tell it to receive that message. So we want to say, when I receive blow up balloon, I want to now begin my whole code. So I wanted to begin when the green flag is checked, I wanted to begin when I receive this message. So I'm actually going to take all my code and set it underneath my broadcast. So I really don't need this anymore. So now, if I hit my green check, green flag, it'll say, hello, would you like any balloons? I'll say yes, that, say okay, great. And then it calls, and as you can see, this became yellow, and now it's starting. Um, and actually, what I actually do want it to do is I want to go ahead and bring back in this green flag because when I, this green flag, I want it to hide. I want to change the look of my balloon. I want to hide it. So when the green flag is checked, anytime that the green flag is checked, it'll hide the balloon so that it's no longer visible. And then when I receive my message to blow up balloon, let's change this to one second. When I receive my message to blow up balloon, that's when it will uh, set the size to zero, and I want to show my balloon now. Oh, actually, I want to show it after it goes to the location it, it wants to go to. So let's throw it in here. Um, so now when the green flag is checked, it'll hide the balloon. When I receive my message to, hey, blow up balloon, I'll wait a second, then I'll go over here to my location, uh, While well, I set my size to zero, go to my location, then I'll show myself, and then I'll start to grow. So hit the green check. It'll hide the balloon. Hello. <laughs> Would you like some balloons? I'll put yes. I'll say okay, great. And there you go. So now that simulates. <laughs> now that simulates. Um, Andy actually getting a balloon, blowing it up, and passing it to his other hand before starting to blow up another balloon. Again, we're going to go ahead and make copies of this. Um, but that's why I said I didn't want to um, go ahead and make my other balloons now because we're still in here. We're still revising. We're still revamping our code, uh, making it better, better, and better. Um, so we want to just make sure that this code is set first before we actually want to make sure that this code is set first before we actually go ahead through and um, uh, create the other balloons. So now uh, it looks like we have our broadcast message. He blows up the balloon. Now what? Well, once he gets enough balloons, he's going to raise up to the sky. Um, and with that, we're going to use a motion. And we're going to say glide, glide, 
blank seconds to random position. Well, not to random position. We want them to go to uh, something actual. Uh, so for this, we're going to, let's say we're going to go over here to our sprites. And we're just going to put something up here that we can have our um, uh, sprite basically use as a, as a point to a uh, point of reference. Uh, so we're just going to, oh, I don't know. Let's say, <clears throat> uh, something like this, something like this, this line. I like they have a line in here. I didn't know they had that. Uh, so just this line in here. And we're going to bring this up to the top just so that we can say, hey, Mr. Andy, uh, when the balloons are big enough, go straight up to the, that line up there. Uh, this line has no other use for code or purpose or anything, so I don't think we'll be using this too much. Uh, but I do want to set it to invisible and actually use Andy to glide. Uh, let's say he takes about five seconds. That gives five seconds for the user to pop out the balloons. And we want to say line. Uh, so now, again, if we drag this out, just click on this code, he'll start the glide. Um, and as you can see, even though that the line is not there, it still recognizes that, hey, there is a line up there. And Andy now glides to that line. Um, and so if I put that back, he will. Uh, actually, one each. Uh, I don't really need to move him down because when I start the program, he'll move down. But I'll just go ahead and move them down anyway. Um, and so let's see. So he moves up to the line. Um, but first, he needs a reason to move up to the line. So um, we actually need to set something in here that says something in the balloon that says, hey, I'm big enough. Um, or we'll set something probably in the last one that says, hey, I'm big enough um, and I want to broadcast a message to saying that I have enough air and now I'm heavy enough uh, that you can actually float. So I want to broadcast, I want to broadcast a message saying that I'm done blowing up. So new message, uh, we're going to saw this balloon one done and let's hit OK so now if we come back over here to our Andy and check his code and then we'll say hey when I receive the message balloon one done I want to glide so now um, and I'm actually going to go ahead and set my balloon uh, I want to set my balloon to actually glide. And we want it to glide five seconds also, not to random position to the actual line. So now that both Andy and the balloon should be able to glide. So let's hit the green check. Yeah, Andy goes in place. He says, hello. He asks, do you want a balloon? I say, yes. He says, OK, great. He blows up a balloon. It goes to his location. It broadcasts a message, and it raises up. But <clears throat> it looks like it might be going slower. So glide five seconds to line. Andy, glide five seconds to line. Uh, not sure why Andy is going faster than him, but uh, we can kind of work on that later on. Maybe we might have to throw a weight a weight in there or something like that. Um, I'm just going to click the green check just to bring him back down in place and the balloon in place also. Um, OK, so now we have that. Um, so <clears throat> right now, Andy blows up balloon. It gets big enough. It brings him up to the sky. Now our task is to, again, pop the balloon before uh, it reaches the sky and Andy floats away. So for that, we want to go into our balloon sprite and say, hey, we want to pop you. So we'll come over here. Um, what do we want to do for this?
Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right, so we're going to use a if statement, just a standard if then statement, and we're going to say uh, sensing. So we want to say if the balloon is touching the mouse pointer, then we want to set the visibility to zero. So we want to hide it. Um, and also we want to um, have it make a sound also. So we want it to pop. So, and it's already there, great. Let me see, do we have any other sounds? So if you go over here to sound, um, go to choose a sound. Again, they have a whole bunch of them here. Um, guitars, basses, car horn, um, cave, clock ticking. Um, actually, we probably could use a clock ticking in order to say, hey, the time is, time is going away. Andy's going to the sky, heard him pop the balloon. Uh, so yeah, actually, we're going to throw that in there also. Um, so yeah, we're going to use pop and clock ticking. Um, so let's go back to code. And we're going to say broadcast. Um, so we're going to say, yeah, we're going to say broadcast, um, balloon one done, and then start gliding. Once it starts gliding to the line, we want this clock to start ticking. And then once the clock starts ticking, we want to throw in here a code that says, Hey, if the pointer touches the mouse pointer, or if the um, I'm sorry, if the mouse pointer touches the sprite, then we wanted to make the sound pop. So play sound, pop until done, and then hide the balloon. And then we also want to stop the clicking sound. Uh, so let's go ahead and I don't want to do the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just test this out, the glide. So. Uh, actually, I'll have to make this visible first. So I'm going to start it at show, actually. So show balloon. And there we go. And it's not working. Why is it not working? Oh, and actually, I want to, because the clock didn't start ticking until until after this glide was done. So I want to put it before the glide. And let's just make sure that works again. So it's going through that. Okay, yep, there we go. All right, but still, it didn't pop. So why didn't it pop? Oh, so um, I just remembered. So when you're doing with uh, if then statements in this program, for whatever reason, you have to tell it for uh, how long do you want it to run that program. So um we don't just want to run the program and then be done with it we want to say do it forever and basically doing it forever just means that um it just basically means that this program will continue to run forever and ever and ever until this condition has been met um so now if we restart this actually i'm just going to bring this down and we hit show it's going to grow and then mm, nope still didn't do it um ch -ch 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 -ch. uh let's go ahead and put in our infamous weight in there for a second Um, if touching, actually, let me just, okay, so I just heard it, there we go. <laughs> okay, so now I can hear it. And I guess it was that weight in there. So now let's 
let's try this out. So it's there. I'm going to start gliding. Okay, so it did pop, but it did pop, but it um it didn't let me pop while it was gliding. So I may have to throw this glide inside my um inside my forever command and that might do it um let's try that real quick no that's not doing it okay so I know we need a forever command. And I know we want to glide. So the issue lies in here where it says if touching mouse pointer, then wait a second. Pop hide until done. Um, And actually, I want to uh, I want to set the size to zero too. I don't want to just hide it. I want to set the size to zero, and hide it. Um, even though it's hidden, it's still there, and I was still able to popping sound. So I set the size to zero just so that it's so small that it I I won't be able to hear that popping sound anymore. Um, but it still doesn't give me what I want exactly. So let's let's do this again. Okay. Okay, so that does work actually. Stop. Start the command. Okay, so do you only work sometimes? It just worked. Um Actually, let me let me remove that. Wait a second, because there's a delay in it. And I think that, oh, uh, you know what? Let me see something real quick. Okay, so do that. Oh, I see. I see what it is. Um. Okay, so so what's going on is that. Basically, this program is running and it's not popping because I have to actually, so let me see. As soon as this program starts, then I need to be on the balloon. Um, so if I click on this, let's just say I'm on a balloon. No, but that did it there. Yeah, for some reason it is, uh, I don't think I need to wait. Maybe I shouldn't be using a forever command. Maybe I should be using more, um, let me try this repeat until Let me try this real quick. No, not let me do that.
Yeah, sometimes these are a little bit tricky. Like I said, this is the fun part when you go through coding. They say it's like 20% of coding and 80% of debugging. So this is a uh, this is a uh, debugging part, I guess. Um, so let me see for one second. That you might have to debug for a little bit, um, and fix in order to make it kind of do what you want to do. Uh, so what I did here, as you can see, I added in two more broadcasts. Well, actually, I added in one more broadcast, and uh, the broadcast that I had before, my balloon one done that I made, I actually set it so that this sprite can actually receive that same broadcast, uh, that same broadcast message. So when it's balloon one done, it received that message, then it said, okay, hey, start making this sound and glide up um, five seconds to the line. But then immediately after that, again, like I said, the program runs so fast, it's actually running two broadcast messages at the same time um, because this broadcast message is not yet done while this one is starting. So this one actually says, okay, hey, when it says balloon pop, we want to wait until the mouse pointer is touching. And then once the mouse pointer is touching it, it will play the sound pop, set the size to zero, hide it, and stop the sounds, both the sounds of the clock ticking as well as um, uh, the pop sound. And then I wanted to stop this other script right here. And then I also want to stop this script. So let's say, for example, uh, if I just left the stop script in here and I run my program, you see this one goes yellow, the balloon grows, and then you can see both of these are yellow. I put my mouse over it. This one stops being yellow, but this one stayed. I'm not sure if you caught that, but I'll run it again. Um, you'll see that this script actually stays running. So I pop it. This one is yellow still around it, so it's still actually running. So I want to actually go ahead and stop this script. So stop all other scripts in this um, in this sprite, and also stop this actual script itself as well. Um, and that does it. So now we have balloon growing, and we have a do while. So while it's moving up, it's also running another script. I pop it, and then they both end. I'm not sure if do while is the correct term for it, but that's just how I call it. Um, again, because it's just said, saying that while um, the program is doing one thing, while it's doing one thing, we want it to do another thing. And I guess we can actually add in as many other things as we want to. Um, so if we want to set another do while and say, hey, change costumes, uh, we can make it change costumes all the while it's going up and up and up and up and up. All right. Um, so now let's bring Andy back down here. Um, so now we have it set. So let's run the program. Uh, say hello. Yes, I want balloons. Great. Blow up the balloons. Switch it to the hand. Start going up. Pop it. But Andy still is. Why is Andy going up? Because we didn't code him to come back down. So. We want to actually set another broadcast message. Um, so let's say uh, we got to go to the balloon again. Um, and then as soon as uh, we're broadcast, um, as soon as this script is done, it's been popped, we want to tell Andy that it's been popped. So we're going to call this uh, No More Balloons. And so come back over here to Andy. Andy is going to receive the message of No More, no more Balloons. And now Andy can actually glide back down to his position. So his starting position was, if you remember, uh, 0, negative 105. Um, I want him to hide. Uh, let's just say, we'll just say five seconds also. 
uh, make this zero. And what was it? Negative 105, I think. Double check. Yes, 105. So now if we uh, run the program, and it should glide back down as soon as that has been popped. So let's say yes. Okay, great. Blow up the balloon. Okay. And pop. And Andy does not come back down. Um, and this may be because we stopped the script on the balloon. Um, So actually, let's set this no more balloons here. So as soon as we're actually going to set it after the mouse pointer. So when it's the mouse pointer hits, say we're going to broadcast no more balloons, and then he's going to come back down. That should work there. Uh, it's going to do that before it actually goes down to the end of the code to finish running the scripts. So blown up the balloon, switch hands, and pop, and he comes back down. There we go. All right, so I hope you all saw what I did there. I had to actually move this um, broadcast no more balloons over here because when this program was running, uh, it ran, it ran, it ran, it ran, it ran, and then it stopped this script before um, it was ever able to get to the no more balloons because uh, remember, remember we put it, underneath uh, the glide for five seconds. So what Andy was doing, he was gliding for five seconds. He was waiting, he was waiting, he was waiting, and then he was going to go uh, no more balloons. Um, and actually, we should probably do a end here. We should probably put a stop this script here um, just so that whatever whatever happens, if it ever gets to this. Um, and actually, if Andy hits the ceiling, let's let's we, let's make it change the background. Um, we're going to we're going to change it to like something like the sky or the universe or something. So let's choose a background. Um, and let's choose something up in the galaxy. Perfect. Um, yeah, I think that, I think that's the best one. All right. Um, so now what we have to do is actually tell the program to start on the correct, um, scene. So when the green is checked, we want to set the background. Uh, when the green button is checked, we want to switch the background to blue sky. Okay. Um, just so whenever we start, we start in the blue sky. And then uh, if we come back over here to the balloon, and we glide, we glide, we glide for five seconds. If this script starts, uh, this, if this script goes through entirely, then we want to set background. Where is it? Um, why am I jumping over? Okay, here it is. If it goes through all five seconds, we want to set switch the background to uh, galaxy. Yes. So now let's hit the green check. It starts off as so. And we're going to say yes. This time we're going to let Andy reach the sky. OK. And after five seconds, makes it to the top, and it switches. So now he's up in the galaxy. Um, and I might actually change that to say if Andy I might actually change that to just say if Andy touches the edge, then we are going to want to um, 
if Andy touches the edge, then we're going to want to uh, change the backdrop. Um, but I might I might do that later. This is fine for right now. All right, so um, I think that's about it. Oh no, so one thing I want to do also is come down here to variables. So I want to set uh set, there's certain variables um, and the way that I want to do it is to count how many balloons. Um. Well, actually, I think I just want to have it count down from five, say five, four, three, two, one, zero. Um, so as soon as the green is, uh, flag is checked, I want to set my variable to five, right? Um, and I want to hide my variable also. So... It doesn't really matter where I put it because it's all going to happen all at once. So, uh, and actually, I got to make my variable also. So, I'm going to say this of uh, uh, timer. And I'll just put it for, um, eh, for all sprites. That's fine. Uh, so, now I have a new variable and it's called timer. And you can see it up here. Actually, I'm going to just put it right down here at the bottom. And the only time that I want to show this timer is when he starts to go up in the sky. So when I do, when I receive my balloon one is done, and then I'll glide up to the sky. So, um, show variable at when I start gliding um, show variable when I start gliding and then uh, change my variable by one or actually negative one Um, and actually, I, I'm going to have to throw in a couple of weights in here just to wait the number of seconds. And what I'm going to do actually is just say, um, um, I'm actually just going to make a block for that, actually. Make a block. I want to call it timer. Find the timer, and that's going to show variable. And I'm going to actually throw in a repeat. And I just wanted to repeat five times. So I want to show my variable. I want to, uh, it's already set to five, but I just want to show it. I want to wait one second and then decrease the variable by one. And then it's going to repeat that all over again. So now I got to come over here and actually place my block in place. So now if I click on that, Oops, so I didn't actually set it to five first. So hit yes, and I can still see it. Why can I still see it? Oh, duh, because so I put hide variable, my variable. I want to set that to timer, set timer makes make sure I got these correct no I do not so this needs to be the timer these need to be a timer make sure you have all your names correct um, that's very important especially how you name stuff whether it's your camel um, camel naming convention or with spaces dashes whatever you put in there that everything needs to be named correctly or it will not work so now if I click on it this should hide yep so it hides I uh, say yes. Now it'll blow up the balloon. 
it'll go over there and Ah, okay, so it did what I wanted it to do, but it did not do it um, when I wanted to do it because I wanted I asked it to glide first for five seconds and then display the timer. So I want to change the timer and bring that around that way. So let's try that again. <clears throat> okay, great. Now it's going to blow up the balloon. Switch hands, display timer, and start counting down. There we go. And as you can see, it only stops for whatever reason. Um, Andy only started to glide up after the timer was done. So I may have to do a do while also. For this one um so let's go to broadcast wow okay um broadcast new message and let's say start timer and then when I receive start timer, let's go ahead and start the timer. So now, if I click the green flag, yes, okay, great. Blow up the balloon. He's gonna get the balloons, timer's gonna start. And there we go. All right. Um, and actually, I'm going to come over here to balloon because that script was still running. And I wanted to, if this balloon ever reaches the sky and the galaxy is shown, I want to end all scripts instead of just, just that one. I want the whole program to end. Um, and what I'm also going to do is just to interact with the user a little bit, I want to come over here to Andy and I want him to actually ask the user um, I want to have him actually ask the user if they can help him get him down, if they can help get him down. So I guess I want to put that in um, When I receive balloon one done, I want him to say help, help. Uh, where is? Okay, here we go. So when I receive balloon one done, I want him to say or yell help. for two seconds and I want to interact with the user and ask them uh, let's move our code down a little bit I want to ask them Bill will you please pop the balloons and get me down from here All right, it's just quick edit, and then um,
Um, and I want to see if I can actually, because you can actually throw in different things, different places. So I want to see if I can throw in the answer, say, wait for the answer. Instead of wait for any second, just wait for answer and see if that'll work. So uh, help, help. Will you please pop the balloons and get me down from here? Say yes. Okay, so that does actually work. Um, although it did not broadcast my start timer like I wanted to. Oh yeah, it did, but for some reason this is balloon one done. Oh no. Um, Hold on. Should this be balloon one done? I think I messed up somewhere. Um, I think this should be the start timer. Let's try that again. Okay, yep, yeah, that's good. <clears throat> accidentally switch that um, uh, and for this one um, just for time's sake I'm just gonna leave this answer as um, as whatever so even if they say no <laughs> he'll still float up and then I guess they just won't help him but if they say yes you gotta pop the they gotta pop the balloon so let's run this actual thing and see how this um, so hello would you like some balloons? Yes. Okay, great. Blow up the balloons. Help, help. Um, so that doesn't work because the balloon and the timer started to go off. Or not the timer, but the sound for the timer, the clock ticking. So this should actually be, instead of when I receive balloon one, when I receive start timer instead. So this should be when I receive start timer. And... Let's see how that works. I'm not sure if that'll work out the way that I want it to, but we'll see. So let's just say, we'll just check our other code also. Let's just say, no, not really, and see what happens. Just make sure we didn't mess up any other code in the previous. Um, okay, have a great day. Go for, I think, four or five seconds, and then it stops the script. Good. So we hit start over again. Uh, hello. Let's just time to say yes. And okay, great. Blow up the balloon. Switches hands and waits. Um, help, help. Will you be able to get me down? Pop the balloons. Say yes. And then okay, pop. Everything stops. Um, but the timer doesn't stop. So we want. Andy to when he receives balloon pop to go ahead and hide the timer again. So let's say go to when I receive balloon pop. Let's go ahead and um, my blocks or actually Actually, let's just go ahead and hide the variable timer. So let's try that one more time real quick. And I like how quickly and easily everything saves and syncs up. It's actually pretty nice. Um, so 
So he's blowing up balloons. Goes over, help, help. Will you be able to help me? Say sure. He goes, goes, goes. Balloon pop. Um, comes back down. And it does not hide the timer. Uh, when I receive balloon pop, hide variable. Come back to balloon. Um, it may be because of this here. No, because it never reaches that. It never reaches that. So when I receive balloon pop, makes a popping sound. Stop other scripts in Sprite. Stop this script. And then come back to Andy. When I receive balloon pop, hide variable timer. Uh, I think I might have to add in here an end, end script to end all the other scripts and other scripts in Sprite and then hide the variable. But that might end Andy from going down. Let's... Uh, Or actually, let's let's move this to here and see what that does. When I receive no more balloons, and I have to glide down, let's hide the timer. Yeah, let's let's try that real quick and see how that works out. So let's say yes here. Let's just say sure and pop the balloon and timer goes away and it comes back down. Got it. All right. So um, looks like that is all working now. Um, now, I guess the last thing that we can do is when Andy reaches back to the ground, we can just say. Thank you so much. Once you get back to the ground, say thank you so much. So let's just raise him up. No matter where we put him, since we set the glide to come back down to that exact location, he should just come glide back to that exact location. Yep. And it should only take five seconds to get there. So once he gets there, say thank you so much. And script ends. Um, and I'm actually going to, instead of in the beginning, wait two seconds. I'm just going to want him to wait one second. Uh, this random timer here, we don't need that anymore. Um, okay, that's looking good. Um, so the last thing now that we have to do is add in more balloons. Um, and actually, I'm going to use, because just because I have never used it before, so you all bear with me, but it's something called a clone. Um, where is that? Um, okay, here it is. Uh, create clone of myself. Um, and I think this will do what I wanted to do, but I'm, I'm not sure. Um, But basically, what I wanted to do is um, I think what I want to do is set it here. So after it is done, with the balloon grow, 
I want to make a clone of it. And then, yeah, I'm not sure how to use this, so let's just see. <laughs> uh, let's, so let's go ahead and try this out. It blows up the balloon. Ah, so it did make a clone. It did make a clone, but it did not blow up. So, um, so I might want to just put it there and then I probably want to actually add in another I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate that I don't need these I just want to duplicate that just to have another one so let's see how this looks here um, so let's see so that's going to grow 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 it's going to go over and then, then okay so it's actually going to make a same it's going to grow the same balloon actually instead of a different balloon um so actually what i want to do is create a new block and just going to call it um balloon row two Hit okay and um, let's remove this, put, put this back there and my balloon grow too. I want to put that there and then I want to put my balloon grow two here and my balloon grow two I actually need it to start at a certain location and all that and I want to set it to zero so I'm actually just gonna duplicate all of this um, and I'm going to bring it here um, and I don't why do I have that there Don't need that. I don't need that. Um, all right, so let's see. So we have balloon grow one. It's going to grow, then it's going to move to position, then it's going to duplicate itself. And then it's going to. Start balloon grow two. Um, yeah, no, I don't I don't think the clone is going to work. The only way, yeah, no, I don't think the clone is going to work this method. Um, so I'm actually just going to just cancel all of this out. Um, I'm just going to have to duplicate it. That's fine. So I have my balloon grow one. I don't need this. Um, let's make sure all of this is still working. The balloon grows goes to position help help we say yes it goes up it goes there and for some reason my timer started at zero uh, I think it's because we didn't start the script over when we start the script over then it should set to five so that's fine but all that works you're welcome Andy uh, so come back over here to balloon and let's just say duplicate so now we have another balloon and we want to change the costume to yellow um, again it has the same exact code um, but this time uh, the time it takes to blow up the balloon is uh, 0.5 times 5, so two and a half seconds. 
So we want to wait. Well, no, actually, because then we want it to glide one second. So that's three and a half. So let's say after three and a half seconds, this one will this one will go. So make this 4.5. And so I just added a 3.5 to that one. And we might have to change some of this stuff around too. But let's just check this out real quick. Uh, say hello. We'll say yes. OK, great. He blows up the first balloon. Got there. And then he blows up the second balloon. And it's good there. OK. All right, so that's working nicely. Um, but again, we have to change a little bit around. Um, Um, for example, we, we we want to see the yellow balloon as it goes over. So we want it to glide. Uh, let's just show the yellow balloon real quick. We want it to glide over to the left a little bit. Like so. So negative 22, negative 4. Negative 22 and negative 4. Um, we may just have to go into the costume and rotate it a little bit uh, just so it kind of looks a little bit better when we so let's rotate it like that and just a little bit more or actually I guess we could have left it the same location and just rotate it um, yeah I'll probably do that instead so it was at negative 11, negative 7, so let's just say I'll do negative 15 just to move it over a little bit and then back to negative 7 like so and then from there we want to um, play it just to make sure say yes That balloon grows, goes over. This balloon grows and goes over. Okay. I want to say yes. Okay. So now, uh, something that I noticed, so I had to say yes two times because it was receiving the script twice, um, which I don't want it to do that. So that's why I got to rename a few things. Um, just before um, this is all completed. So once you go over here to, let's say, uh, broadcast balloon pop, um, we're just going to call this balloon pop 2. Balloon pop 2, hit OK. And we're going to broadcast balloon 1 done. We're going to do balloon done and instead of balloon pop we want balloon pop too um, no more balloons should be fine and start timer should be fine um, let's just check out Andy when is he asking a question. So when I receive balloon one done, ask the question. Okay. So we actually want to make maybe changes because we're going to have three balloons. So let's just go ahead and create our third balloon and just to balloon three done. And change this to balloon three pop or balloon pop three. Okay. And so now we come back to Andy. Um, when he receives balloon three being done, <clears throat> that's when he'll start to rise up to the sky um, and ask the question. And so for this one, we're going to change the costume to purple. We're going to rotate it. 
this way now, like so. And then we're also going to uh, change the position for it a little bit. Um, since the first one was at negative 11, so we're going to make that, um, uh, let's just add, let's just add like five to it. So negative, what's that, six? Negative six there. And then um, we also want to, um, what else do we want to do? I think that might be it. So green check. Hello, would you like some balloons? Say yes. Okay, great. Blow up the first balloon, move over. Blow up the next two balloons. Okay, so that's what we want to change also. So then help me. Um, will you be able to help me down? Yes. Okay. Okay, so cool. So balloon three is good. Uh, I mean, balloon three, I mean, balloon two is good. Balloon three, we still need to add, uh, what was it, three and a half seconds to here. So uh, that makes it 10 seconds total. Um, wait. No. 4.5 plus 3, uh, 8 seconds total. There we go. So, 8 seconds total, and then we want to. Uh, for some reason, it did not pop. Uh, oops, okay, so balloon pop three. I want to change the balloon pop three. And then when I receive balloon pop three, there we go. All right, so this may be it. Hello. Would you like some balloons? Say yes. Okay, great. And then he blows up the first balloon, blows up the second balloon, blows up the third balloon. Start to float away. Say help, help. Whoops, I popped one accidentally already. Say yes. And there we go. So let's run that back because I didn't like how that looked. Um, say yes. Yes, I help you. Popped all three balloons. This goes back down. Say thank you so much. All right, and now let's just see it on the big screen. Hit the green check. Hello. Would you like some balloons? Say yes. And of course, we can add stuff in here instead of just saying hello. My, you can say hello. My name is Andy. Uh, would you like some balloons? Um, Instead of him, as you can kind of see it here, he got the balloons coming up and everything. And instead of him just saying help, help, as soon as he gets here, uh, we can actually have him float up a little bit and then him say help, help. And then we kill, because he has to feel himself floating away first. Um, so we could have added that in there. But just for the sake of time, uh, I didn't want this to be a too long to show whatever. Um, but let's just say, help me get me down, say yes. He starts floating up. Pop all the balloons, he starts falling back down, the timer goes away. And thank you so much. Alrighty, so I hope this does help um, anyone out that needed some help kind of creating a uh, project. Um, I know this was actually way much longer than I expected it to be, but I just really want to kind of go through everything and show you all. Um, don't want to say that it's easy, but kind of show you all how the actual uh, program works itself, some of the fun different functions that you can do with it. And uh, it'll allow you to, you know, kind of focus more on the actual coding part, because all of this is really just um, the coding part. And what we could have done also, just now that I'm looking at it, um, which I like to do kind of at the end, is kind of do a whole bunch of cleanup. So I don't see too much of it here. 
but you know we could have added a couple of more blocks if we needed to we could have added some repeats if we needed to um, i actually don't think this needs much i don't think this needs much um fine tuning or whatever um and i just want to make sure one thing as i'm talking i just want to make sure that if we don't help Andy, will the uh, background still change just to make sure that's still working? Um, but again, yeah, like I said, I, I just want to make sure that everyone is able to create, you know, different projects with Scratch. Um, the program seems like a lot, but it's actually, you know, um, the way that it looks is kind of geared towards more the beginner uh, programmer. Uh, yes, I'll help you, Andy. And then again, we can fine tune how, you know, the balloons and Andy kind of reach the sky. They're supposed to reach at the same time, but as you can see, um, you know, they, they don't exactly do that right now just because they're different sizes and stuff like that. So we might have to change Andy to a six, um, make him take six seconds rather than just five seconds to float up. So um, just a, a second slower than everything else. Um, okay, great. Close up the balloons. I'm just going to say, no, I'm not going to help you. So you're just going to float away. Now he's a little bit slower. Um, so we could, you know, just fine tune it. It'll, it'll take some time, but I don't want to, I don't have to go through all that right now. Um, but yeah, so like I was saying, I just want to make sure that everybody is aware of how to use the program. Um, there's a bunch of different things that you can do with, I didn't even think we, we didn't touch too many of these operators. I think we just used a knot, but all these operators that you can use, um, all these sensing functions, controls, we went through controls a little bit, um, different events. Again, if in the controls, if you're having trouble with one of the if then statements, try nesting it inside of a forever command or a repeat. Um, because again, the program moves so fast that it, it goes through the if then statement without you even realize, realizing it. So if you throw it in a forever command, it may actually help you out quite a bit. So just keep that in mind. Um, a few events, we use that quite a bit. Sounds, we didn't use too much, but we used a little bit. Um, looks and motions um so yeah if you ever have like a assignment homework project or anything to do with this um this project here kind of just touches really on everything that you know you could you could use for it uh for a, a simple game like this you know um uh, you can create in like a weekend or something like that so um hope you all enjoyed uh if you have any questions please feel free to hit me up in the comments uh ask me uh, i'll try to help you out the best as i can thanks everyone Bye.